and turn the world on with her smile Who can take a nothing day and suddenly make it all seem worthwhile Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it With each glance and every little movement you show Scene one, apartment day, fall, 1975. A somewhat tacky West Hollywood two bedroom furnished apartment. Small kitchen table with chairs, cheap bookshelves, couch, TV, and primitive answering machine. Alan and Sarah are at the kitchen table. Alan is playing with a Rubik's cube. Sarah is hunched over a portable typewriter. They're writing a script. What about this? Lou is fiddling with a Rubik's cube and Mary says, Mr. Grant, what do I have to do to get your attention? Jump out of a cake? What? Our, our modest Mary Richards would never say that. You know in the opening titles where she's all bundled up and flings her hat in the air? Yeah. It was summer. Mary Richards is not a prude. She's just cautious. You know, you can't be too careful these days. Sexual revolution be damned. She's read looking for Mr. Goodbar. A one-night stand can lead to murder. Okay, Rhoda's the one who gets killed. But still, Mary realizes that meaningless sex eats away at your self-respect and very soul. God, I gotta get laid. Yes, you do. Sarah, Sarah, darling, as your partner and best friend in the whole world, I order you to sleep with the first guy you see. I don't care if he's from Arkansas. I can't do that. It's been eight months. You can and you must. Whatever happened to the three-date rule? Oh, honey, it's 1975. It's a three drink rule. No, no, I'm sorry, but I have raised my standards. If I'm going to surrender my precious body to a guy now, one, I must want to see him a second time. Two, no, actually, there's only one. Please look harder or use that vibrator you want at the B'nai Brith raffle. Okay, okay. Mary comes in and says, can we talk, Mr. Grant? And he says, just let me finish this Rubik's Cube. And she says, fine, I'll come back in four years. <laughs> Good. It, okay, well, or she says, imagine you're colorblind and it is finished. Okay. Or open a jar. It's much more satisfying. Oh, wow. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I got another. He's fiddling with the cube and says, if anyone asks, I have Ted's brain. Uh, um, okay, I just, I wonder if there's a, a better Ted's an idiot joke. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, Ted comes in, sees the Rubik's cube and eats it. You're on fire. You're on fire today. So you're going with that? No. The phone rings. Don't say hello. Say KHJ plays the hits. If it's them, you win $1,000. The machine will get it. What machine? Yeah. I just bought a telephone answering machine. Wait, you answer your phone, KHJ plays the hits, and wonder why you haven't found Mr. Wright? It's a thousand bucks. I sell caramel corn at farmer's market. Is there any cockamamie new gadget you don't have? We live in a golden age of invention. Mark my words, someday everyone will have their own computers in their homes. Really? Yes, yes, and they'll be cheap pieces of shit, but eventually they're gonna figure it out. We hear a beep then. Alan, it's your mother. What is this thing? I hate it. Where are you? Hey, listen, I was watching the Merv Griffin show last night. He had on your Elton John. <laughs> Hi, Elton John. All I can say is, thank God I taught you how to dress. He takes credit for this. So, aren't you two years up already? I mean, you and Sarah were going to give this silly pipe dream two years, right? Now you know why I have the machine and the bald spot already. Sarah's a funny girl. So if you can't break in with her, then clearly it's not meant to be. I have a son she never had. And don't tell me you're a writer. You're a waiter at Dupars, no less, which makes the IHOP seem like a, a kosher deli. Call me, get rid of this thing. Wow. Yeah, yeah, this was my life growing up. Gypsy without the songs. It's a wonder you're not running down the street naked with a rubber glove on your head yelling, hey, I'm a slid. Thank you. <laughs> that is why we have to make it. So one day my mother can say, oh, well, at least he was successful. Okay, so let me ask you, does it have to be in sitcoms? 
What? Well, there may be another opportunity. It's not exactly what we planned, but a friend in New York just got a job writing on some new weekly sketch show. NBC is starting next month. I, I don't know the details, but there will be skits and music, but all done by people our age. So we're not writing 90 year old Bob Hope in a Beatles wig chasing after Brooke Shields. It's supposed to be edgy and topical. How can it be topical? It's gonna air live on Saturday nights at 11.30. Yeah, okay, I know that's late, but that'll give them more freedom to be subversive. Sounds kind of intriguing, doesn't it? Variety is dead, Sarah, it's old, it's tired. It's, it's pop stars and tuxedos doing Beach Boy medleys with John Wayne. This is supposed to be revolutionary. At 11.30 on a Saturday night. That's the one time of the week we all go out. Who's gonna be watching? What, babysitters and old people who can't figure out the remote? You could move to New York and forget to tell your mother. Excuse me, but aren't you the one who wants to uh, get out of that hellhole? Yeah, that's when I was a stand-up and New York robbed me of my youth and dignity. But those bagels, oh, you can't get them anywhere like that. All right. I don't care. I love L.A. I don't want to move to New York. It snows there. It's, it's crowded. It's where Mr. Goodbar lives. I'll only date rabbis. There's a knock at the door. Alan crosses to answer. Sarah, we're going to make it. All we need is one break, and no one has more talent than us. Alan opens the door. Doug enters. He's carrying two old suitcases. Hi. Right. Where is Bobby Drucker? Which one of you ordered the Filipino bride? I'll cuddle, but I will not drive carpool. Hey, do you realize there are only men out at the pool? It's like the SeaWorld cast of a chorus line. And they're all wearing Speedos. Have some decency. God almighty will smite down you sinner boys for all those grape smugglers, those banana hammocks, those ouch patches, say hallelujah. And you are. Doug Manuga Lalarian. I like to make an entrance. Bobby said I could crash here for a few days. Ellen crosses the hallway and knocks on a door. Uh, Bobby, there's a disturbed Jehovah's Witness to see you. Huh? Oh. Doug! Bobby hey answers. there! Hey there, Rowdy! You made it, everyone! This is Doug Manuga Larrarian. We uh, were disc jockeys together in Fresno. People make fun of Fresno, but they had the first modern landfill in the United States. Really? Is there a gift shop? And he just got hired here at KHJ, the biggest, most influential radio station in the country. Uh, maybe 10 years ago. Wasn't KHJ where one of the disc jockeys shot and killed his wife and the station asked listeners to help find him? Yeah, what a contest. Uh, those were the glory days. Now they're doing cash call. KHJ plays the hits. Yeah. Who is dumb enough to answer their phone that way? The odds of us calling have to be like, like a billion to one. <laughs> I know, go on. <laughs> Who is that monumentally stupid? <laughs> Cares. You're going to be on KHJ. Every jock in the world would kill to work there, including one who did. And you made it all the way from Fresno. Still, it's radio, which is one notch above shadow puppets. All right. So what name do you use on the air? Doug Manuga Librarian. What, your real name was too long? Every station wanted me to change it, but I won't. It's long, but it's not Jewish. They wouldn't let you use Bobby Drucker? Not even in Jerusalem. I was Bobby Stevens in Fresno, Bobby Williams in Utica, Wolfman Bruce in Pittsfield. Wolfman Bruce? I was not allowed to shave for a year. Once they change your name, they got you. Pretty soon you have to follow their format, take listener requests. Then, then, then it's just Nazi Germany. You will play the disco music and you will like it. Everybody go step to Donna Summers. And you are? Oh, right. Uh, Doug, this is my cousin and roommate, Alan Stein, and his writing partner, Sarah Zagetti. Hey, man. So, um, what do you write? Sitcoms. We're trying to sell a Mary Tyler Moore show. So what's the script about? Well, Murray, the news writer, is unhappy at WJM quits to go to another station, but that place is worse. So he tells Mary and she has to help him get his old job back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
But wouldn't it be funnier if Murray took a job working for Sue Ann? Instead of hearing about his lousy new job, we, we see it. We get the fun of watching Sue Ann turn him into a boot-licking flunky. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. You know, we thought of that, but we, we rejected it. Fine. Well, good luck. And you, Bobby, stand-up comedy? <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I get no respect. My parents hated me. My bath toys were a toaster and a radio. <laughs> I bought a cemetery plot. The guy said, there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a whole different comedy now. By and for our crowd. There's this new club called the Comedy Store. No one over 30. It's a great chance to work on your craft and be seen. This one comic, Richard Lewis, he's been on The Tonight Show six times already. How's it going for you? Shitty. Richard Lewis beat me to my act. Let me hear one of your jokes. Okay. Um, I, I, I do a bit where I'm talking about my mother. Uh, she's so fearful. He, he, here's how crazy this woman is. Remember the red dye number five scare? Eat one chair and you get cancer. Well, when I was a kid, she would go through my box of trick cereal and remove all the pink pieces. Can you believe that? <laughs> oh, I left out a key element. Uh, you have to be drunk. <laughs> What if, instead of tricks, she got alphabet oat cereal and removed all the sharp letters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, that could work. Thanks. Hey, uh, why don't we get you settled? You'll be staying in my room. Nice to meet you, kids. Dog exits. I am so screwed. Even the Goyim write better Jew jokes than me. Wolfman Bruce? Bobby exits. Okay. Murray works for Sue Ann. We do a scene on the Happy Homemaker set, maybe uh, see him peeling potatoes, cleaning her oven. Modeling bras, buying Summer's Eve. God, this just makes the whole show. No. God, I hate him for it. Huh. Scene two, apartment that night. Alan and Sarah still writing, now a little frazzled. An empty KFC chicken bucket sits on the table. From the bedroom, we hear lovemaking. Mm. Mm. Okay, okay, just ignore it. I'm fine, I'm fine. This is like writing with Cujo. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, okay. Where were we? All right, I think we need a moment for Mary and Murray here. For what? For her to tell him that even though it didn't work out, he was brave to take a risk. What's funny about that? Nothing. It's not to be funny. Well, yes, it is. We're writing a comedy. That doesn't mean we can't take a moment and show some genuine emotion. Oh. Want to see some genuine emotion? Come on! Okay, okay, uh, we assume that we are now on a break. Oh, Jesus Christ, can you believe this guy? He's in town for six uh, hours and already he's fucking his brains out. Uh, he doesn't have your willpower. Well, she is going to hate herself in the morning, that's for damn sure. God, why can't I do that? You know what, it's after 11, let's, let's just pick up tomorrow. What, I missed the part where she comes out and makes him an omelet? Come on, I could use a drink. And you could use a martini the size of this. Join me. No, no, thank you. Being in a bar where every guy has slept with you is not exactly the comfort I seek. Not every guy, just the ones who would give mother a stroke. That's okay. You take off. I'll oh. pack up. You sure? Absolutely. Go. I'll just swing by 7 Eleven and pick up some batteries for my, oh. you know, and head home. I have some batteries. How many do you need? 52. Okay. Just, I, oh, wait. I thought of a great guy for you. Yes, this is, how did, Howard, of course, Howard, he's smart, he's funny, he's straight. Far out, what does he do? He's a Judy Garland impersonator, but- Leave! I'm telling you, you're too picky. He waves yeah. him off in the exits. Sarah oh. gathers up the takeout debris and dumps it in the kitchen. The lovemaking continues. She listens intently and starts getting turned on. She sits on the couch. With one hand, she begins caressing her breast. The other starts on her knee and slowly works its way up her leg. She closes her eyes. And then Bobby bursts through the front door. Sarah is startled, but tries to cover. Bobby doesn't notice. Where is he? Ah, oh, hell. Bobby bangs on the bedroom door. Hey, Doug, you're on the air in one hour. Uh, yeah, I'm almost done. Just have to climax and exchange names. Bobby flips down on the couch next to Sarah. Unbelievable. His midnight break-in show on KHJ, the biggest moment of his career. He doesn't care if he's late. If it were me, I'd have been at the station by noon. <laughs> you know, I never used to be this way. Oh. Oh. Bitter, 
envious, petty, competitive. <laughs> Although in Duck's case, Hari Krishnas would beat him to death with their tambourines. Oh, it was a sweet person. I don't know. No, nah, you are kind, caring, so very beautiful. How was it Woodstock? 500,000 of us. You'd think one person would bring deodorant, Ooh. but we all loved each other and wished each other nothing but success and joy. Oh. I had enough flowers. <laughs> And the most gorgeous boy wanted to make love to me, but the bathroom facilities were so disgusting that I didn't go for four days and it was like concrete down there. <laughs> hey, uh, I wasn't at Woodstock, but I was nearby. Gross singers in the Catskills, uh, but uh, had that same comfort and feeling being with your people, you know? Janice Joplin. Jan Murray. What happened to the love and brotherhood of those 500,000 people? They found out there were only 12 good jobs. Good point. Mm. Now, everyone always talks about the hungry years, how exciting mm. they are. Yeah, well, the hungry years are only romantic and nostalgic when you've made it and look back at them. During, they're frustrating, soul crushing, you question your life and you feel you're wasting other opportunities. Mm. Oh, if you had only spoken at my graduation. Bobby, what if we don't make it? Okay, this is why two Jews should never be left alone in a room together. I wasted a year doing stand-up. Now two years of this. Hey, but I've seen your act. You were very good. Yeah, yeah, but you know the scene. As hard as it is for men, it's almost impossible for a woman to break in. Do you know Johnny Carson won't put a woman comic on The Tonight Show? He doesn't think any of us are funny. I may be the first woman to ever have penis envy so I can get on a talk show. <laughs> See, he's wrong. You are funny. Thanks. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be a bummer. Well, you're not. We're all going through it. And to answer your question, yeah, I worry. I just hope my match game prize money doesn't run out. But I hold on to my faith. God has a plan for all of us. I just have to believe and never follow Richard Pryor. <laughs> well, next time you chat with God, ask him what my plan is. Hey, you and Alan are going to be successful writers. You won't be selling caramel corn. You'll be buying it. Thanks. Oh. That helps. Oh. Sort of. Oh. Just. Oh. Just what? <sighs> Sometimes I feel so goddamn lonely. Oh. Yeah. <gasps> Ugh, and this is not helping. <laughs> Where's my pet rattlesnake? Oh shit, it's in Bobby's room. My deadly poisonous snake. <sighs> Oh. Oh. oh, it's been a while for me too. Eight months, eight long months. Oh. Six months. <laughs> Talk about a couple of losers. <laughs> well, we don't have to be. Bobby leans over and kisses her. Sarah's a little startled. Uh, okay, that was stupid. I, uh... oh boy. <laughs> no, 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 you, you don't have to say anything. I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know why I did that. Although between us, it's 14 months and- yeah, Bobby, it's not that I didn't like it. You did? So what's the problem? The timing isn't right. Bobby, I think you're dynamite. And if this were three years ago, I'd be all over you, but you're a comic. And I was in that world. I know that world and all the qualities that make you guys so special, so insightful, such geniuses are also the qualities that make you the most fucked up human beings on the face of the earth. And again, I say that with deep regard. We're not all neurotic, narcissistic, needy mm. sociopaths. Mm. Oh, no? Mm. No, absolutely not. There's oh, yeah. no heart. Oh. Look, I dated a stand-up and the craziness and drama was so off the charts that even with mind-blowing sex, it just wasn't worth it. Now, I know I shouldn't overgeneralize and it's not fair to you. And maybe in time I'll think differently, but for now I'd rather have my tubes tied than date a comedian. Oh, okay. Oh. I respect that. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Who, who, who was it? What? The comic? The one who was so insane? Oh, uh, nah, not, it's not important. No, really. I want to know. No, he was just a stand up. Makes no difference. <laughs> yes, it does. If it's an LA, a New York comic, I'm sure I know him. And from now on, I'm going to torture myself, always wondering, is it a close friend? Has he been in my house? Have we noshed together at Cantor's? Have I loaned him money? Money that he spent on you? Can I ever trust any of these guys again, knowing that one is out there? Oh, for Christ's sakes, it was Richard Lewis. What? 
Richard Lewis. Are you happy? Are you kidding me? Are, are you fucking kidding me? I didn't know you at the time. Richard Lewis? I can never do summer camp jokes because of that son of a bitch. Okay, calm down. I got ticks, lice, whooping cough, bitten by a squirrel, and I can't use any of it. Seriously, you gotta mellow out. Mind-blowing sex? Let me blow you a joint. No, I have to drive Doug to KHJ because I'm not a big enough putz as it is. Bobby stomps to the bedroom door and begins loudly banging on it. Let's go, God damn it. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> You're not a putz. And maybe I confused the mind-blowing sex with a yeshiva student I once dated. Doug dashes out and heads for the front door. I owe silver away. He exits. Bobby peeks into his bedroom. Holy shit. I think that's Cher. Who goes to Taco Bell and picks up Cher? Bobby exits. Sarah falls back onto the couch. Lights dim over dark. We're listening to a radio broadcast. The song Half Breed by Cher ends. And we hear. That's Cher, who is back on top, which I happen to know is her preference. 106 KHJ cash call time. When your phone rings, don't say hello. Say KHJ welcomes their newest boss jock, Doug Manugalarian, who starting Monday will be on every day, Monday through Friday from three to six and Saturday, two to six, playing all the hits from the boss 30 along with your solid gold favorites. Say that easy to remember phrase and win a thousand dollars. 93 KHJ. Scene three. Apartment early next morning. Bobby's alone on the couch listening to Doug on a transistor radio. The song Someone Saved My Life Tonight ends then. There's Elton John with Someone Shaved My Wife Tonight at 217. KHJ weather, mostly sunny with highs and... Wait, wait, wait a minute. Is that, is that smoke I smell? Woo! Yes! Okay, whoa! There's a fire in the studio. I... I Hang on, hang on. There's a hang sound on. of a phone ringing then. Uh, hello, hello, uh, hello, hello, 911? Um, is this? AHJ welcomes their newest boss jock, Doug no, 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 who starting yeah. Monday will be hey, on listen, every day, Monday through Friday, Friday from oh, 3 to 6, the hell with Saturday, a 2 to 6, <laughs> playing all the hits <laughs> from the boss 30 <laughs> along with your solid gold <laughs> favorite. 93 KHJ! Oh, Lord, our God, King of the universe. Not that I question the wisdom of your wondrous ways, but what's the point of fasting and not eating pork and planting trees in Israel when you bestow such a miraculous gift of talent on some shagets from Fresno? Ellen enters the apartment and crosses to the kitchen. Well, well, now you are up late. Yeah, I was listening to Doug. When he says I don't keep up with current events, I slept with my first Vietnamese refugee tonight. Want some coffee? I have this new machine, Mr. Coffee. Comes with individual miracle filters. Some person on TV named uh, Joe DiMaggio raves about it. You don't know who Joe DiMaggio is? Of course I do. I may be gay, but come on, I'm part of the world. He was married to Marilyn Monroe. He was? Sure, I'd love a cup. So, how was your friend? Phenomenal. He may be the best disc jockey in America. It's like... If Mozart could do shtick and talk up the vocals. He does have a flair. Too bad he knows it. But so what? You no longer are in competition with him. Actually, I sent out a few tapes to stations in the area. Alan crosses to the couch with two cups of coffee. Why? I thought you'd given that up, Wolfman Bruce. I gotta keep my options open. Things aren't exactly taken off for me at the comedy store. You'll get on The Tonight Show. I don't know. I pray to the wrong God. You know who got picked this week? Some doofus named David Letterman. Why? America likes Gentiles. He's got no real act. Just this wholesome from Indiana routine with a space between his teeth. Hollywood still hates Jews. We're in now, so they can't be overt. And it's complicated because the town is run by Jews, so they let Richard Lewis on six times to cover their ass. But at the end of the day, Christ wins. You'll make it. I know you will. And as you know... Mm. I can see into the future. Okay, Jesus, this is Joe DiMaggio should be arrested. You know what I love about you, man? You're always so positive. Yeah, I don't know if it's a gay thing, a grass thing, or wanting to be Lucy Ricardo when you were little, but it's a wonderful quality, and I hope you never lose it, even well, being related I, to me. 
I have reason to be positive. We all do. Bobby, these are sweet days. I mean, especially for comedy. Look at sitcoms. After 10 years of direct like Gilligan's Island, we're now in a golden age. We have the Mary Tyler Moore show, All in the Family, MASH. These are groundbreaking shows that make us laugh and challenge us. You can be a sitcom writer now without having to apologize. And you said it yourself. Comedy store scene is really happening. People are being discovered left and right. This kid, Freddie Prince, got a sitcom out of it. Does he need writers? <laughs> Sorry. But seriously, this is our time. There are a million opportunities out there for us. We just have to be ready. Hey, Mr. Arnstein, here I am. How can you be gay and not know that tune? <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, and you're going to make it too. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, I have only five more weeks to do it, and I have to keep Sarah. She is great, isn't she? Uh, she's more than great. I mean, we're Fred and Ginger. Of course, you know, she's Fred. Lights dim. Over dark, we hear a radio broadcast. A song ends. Then. Doug Manugularian driving you home. And hey, it's my one-month anniversary on the Big 93. He honks a party noisemaker. Let's celebrate! If you're driving, every time I honk my party horn, change lanes. Won't that be fun? Let's try it. Here's a reminder from KHJ. Hollywood High is holding its 10-year reunion on October 22nd at the airport. Hilton, call them. Ninety-three KHJ. Scene four, apartment A. A month later, Bobby is on the phone. Jay Leno is going to be on the Tonight Show Thursday. You shitting me, Jay Leno? You can't put that canned ham of a face on TV. Unbelievable. He hangs up. Alan enters from the bedroom and crosses to the TV, which now has a cable box atop it. Good morning. Behold the future of television. We are now getting cable TV. What's cable TV? A $7 a month miracle? Instead of pulling in stations from an antenna, they all come in through a cable. And it means we get everything now. 24-hour channels, Mexican, Korean, religious, even something called public access where they'll let any Nimrod on the air. I mean, Charles Manson could host a cooking show. Why would we watch any of those? You don't want the recipe for prison blintzes? <laughs> Actually, actually, the real reason to get cable is this, the Z channel. They show movies, rare movies and first run movies. And are you, you ready? You ready for this? No commercials. What? They're shown in their entirety, uncut, undoctored, uncensored. I mean, Butch and the Sundance kid, they, they jump off the cliff and don't yell, oh, piffle. Nudity? <laughs> yeah, they run those erotic French Emmanuel movies. Emmanuel goes to Tahiti. Emmanuel goes to Greece. Emmanuel goes to the free clinic. Hey, I got to sit down for this. <laughs> Holy shit. You know, a few weeks ago when you were talking about the future and how bright it'd be, I, I nodded and just kind of shined you on. But this, complete movies on TV where you can see tits and hear fuck. There truly might be a brighter tomorrow. That's what I've been telling you. So uh, what movies are on tonight? Uh, Herbie Rides Again and The Amputee. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Seven dollars a month for this shit. Doug bursts through the front door. Okay, okay, okay. So there's a girl. She works in the record library. Linda. Hot, hot blonde. Long hair. The beauty pageant type. Former Miss Pacoima or someplace. Um, do I believe in uh, euthanasia? Oh, yes. I believe in children of all nations. So, uh, okay, so I take her out last night. We go to the Palm. I, I, I do all the things that every guy does to impress a chick. We sit underneath my caricature. Then I- Hold on, I, wait, hold on, wait. What, you have a caricature in the Palm? Up there with Robert Redford and Streisand and Pacino? Yeah. After only one month. The owner thinks I saved radio. Richard Lewis doesn't have a caricature, does he? Yeah, but mine's larger. Son of a bitch. Then later, we're at- the rainbow room, I look into her eyes and I realize this truly sick thing. I think I really like her. This little filly, she did something on me. I felt 
feelings I don't ever remember feeling. That's far out, man. No, it's not. She wouldn't bang me. <gasps> she what? After you had spent an entire hour with her? Do you want to know why she wouldn't bang me? They have higher standards in Pacoima? Because I'm too, what, uh, this word that she used, um, mercurial for her. Mercurial? That's code for scary crazy. It's bullshit. I am not mercurial. I am exhilarating. I am a bottle rocket without the inevitable loss of an eye. What'd you do? What any gentleman would do. I dropped her off and I banged someone else. Why hasn't he moved out? He's too lazy and he's offered to pay our full rent. My heart goes out to you. I am going to get her, goddammit. If mercurial's a bad quality, I'll be something else. Something more attractive, loving. I'll, I'm going to shower her with gifts. I'm going to sing underneath her window. I'll fake a fatal disease. Uh, Doug, I, I don't get it. So what if some chick blows you off? That's not supposed to happen. This earth must be off its axis. Well, 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 you know, I, I said, I said, no, I said, we are in big trouble. You're a KHJ boss, Jack. You can get women you have no business getting with your looks. Move on. Have you guys ever been in love? Not to where I've ever faked cancer, no. Yeah, I've been in love. She didn't love me back either. That bitch, whoever she is. Really? Bobby, who is it? Look, it's a drag, man, but, but you live with it. Things are tough out there. It's a cold, brutal world. Can't always get what you want. Sure you can. Wow. Confidence is one thing, but that's believing you can shit silver dollars. Alan hits play on the answering machine. Alan, it's your mother. I hate this thing. Anyway, I was playing golf yesterday at Braemar, and this uh, Jerry Markowitz person uh, joined our foursome. Have you ever heard of him? He's the, wait a minute, I wrote it down here. Oh, he's the story editor of a new show called The Jeffersons. <laughs> I mentioned you and how funny Sarah was, and he'd be willing to read a script of The Jeffersons if you two write one. <gasps> Call me for the details. Uh, get rid of this thing. Out of sight, man. That could be the break you've been waiting for. I know, can you believe it? I mean, who needs William Morris when you have a Yenta mother who plays golf? Can you write a Jefferson's? Sure, why not? Well, you're not exactly from Watts. Yes, well, we can't all be soul brothers like Jerry Markowitz, now can we? Good point. There's a knock at the front door. Alan answers. It's Sarah. Oh my God, say you saw it. Oh uh, what? NBC Saturday night. It premiered last night. No, I was watching Son of Dracula starring Harry Nilsson and Ringo Starr on the Z Channel. Those two starred in the movie? That's news to me. I'm sure it's news to them, too. One of the fun surprises they'll learn someday in rehab. So was it good? No. It was unbelievable. They made fun of everything. The news, commercials, people with missing limbs. When have you ever seen a missing limb joke on the Mary Tyler Moore show? That would make flinging her hat in the air a lot more memorable. There was also a film by Albert Brooks. Albert Brooks? Christ, how do these other Jews find their own thing? We all grew up eating the same pulverized chicken. George Carlin hosted. They had the Muppets sketches with improv actors. And Andy Kaufman, he did that weird Mighty Mouse bit where he sings along with the record and everyone laughs, even though no one knows why it's funny. Even Andy Kaufman has a thing. The Jew whose parents were first cousins. Alan, that's the kind of show we should be writing. Zany, radical, cutting edge. Uh, sitcoms are cutting edge now, and they're about real people. P.S. They're also when viewers are awake. Hey, tell your news. What news? <laughs> well, putting aside your radical show featuring the Muppets, my mother was playing golf with the story editor of the Jeffersons, and if we write a sample, Jeffersons, he will read it and maybe give us an assignment. An assignment? Really? Yes. Actual work, actual money, and actual credit? Fuck Saturday night. That's my pragmatic princess. Simon tov, muzzle tov, muzzle tov, simon tov, simon tov, muzzle tov, Bobby, 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 it's only an opening. We didn't get the assignment yet. Right, sorry. I sometimes just hear the call of the klezmer. But one question. Can we write a Jefferson's? Are you forgetting our heritage? We're Red Sea pedestrians, you know? I asked the same thing. Okay, okay, okay. Let me tell you a story. 
When Sanford and Son went on, Red Fox had a whole Jewish writing staff, but then he thought, this is a black show, I should have black writers. Great. So he fired the staff and replaced them with black writers for season two. Cast comes together to read the first script out loud, and when they finish, Red Fox yells out, where are my Jews? Get me my Jews. We're moving on up. We hear a few seconds of the Jefferson's theme, then scene five, apartment evening, two weeks later. Alan and Sarah are at the kitchen table writing. Wheezy, you get your own self out here. You, your own self? I don't know. And that's an expression he used last week. Oh, that makes him sound like Superfly. Yeah, like you've seen Superfly. I have. It was on the Z channel last month. I, if this TV writing career doesn't pan out, I'm, I'm considering pimp. Oh, that should be a fun conversation with your mother. <laughs> okay, okay. How about um, hmm, Wheezy? Come out here a minute. Or, Wheezy, I need to talk to you, woman. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay, so anyway, she enters and says, what is it, George? And he says, Wheezy, you spent $20 on a book? Then she says, yeah, so what? Yeah. And he says, Wheezy, and uh, we, Wheezy, and, and then a joke. Yeah, a joke. We and it like doesn't have to be a great joke. Yeah, no, no, just a, just a joke. No. Um, any joke. Yeah. Any any joke at all? And just you know, something make us laugh, right? Right, 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 right. Not even let even a smile, a smile. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get me Red Fox's Jews. Sarah. Sarah, we'll get it. When? I, I don't know. You know, maybe Red Fox had the wrong black writers because who are we kidding? Black writers should be writing these shows. Jesus, imagine how hard they have it. As tough as it is for us, they can't even break in on their own goddamn shows. That's very true. And it's unfortunate. But I guess at least their people are portrayed on TV. What do you mean? How many gay characters do you see on current sitcoms? Uh, none, none. I mean, it's okay to watch bigots or straight men wearing dresses to get out of the army, but American households must be shielded from these deviant males who dare to watch Charlie's Angels for the plot. I know, like Batman and Robin are just pals who dress up in spandex suits and hang out together in a secret cave. Point is, I don't get to write for someone like me. Not that that's a prerequisite. If we were on Saturday night, we'd be writing for giant bees and samurais, but just once it would be nice to write in my voice. That's what we keep talking about. Someday we'll create our own show and do that. You know what? You know what, maybe, maybe if we took a moment to picture that, to, that it might re-energize us. Right, yeah, okay. All right, we get our first Emmys. We're standing on that stage, me in a pastel Halston gown, you in Elton John's Captain Fantastic suit, just to piss off your mother. <laughs> I thank uh, our staff, the network, for letting a couple crazy young dreamers create a groundbreaking show that celebrates alternative lifestyles and is changing the thinking of America. Wow, really? We also win a Peabody. Sure, sure, why not? Yeah, but for now, we thank Wolfman Bruce and say fuck you to Doug Manugularian because for once we have something he doesn't. Love it. I love <laughs> it. We, we're the best. <laughs> we are the best. Now, turning back to the script, George says, Wheezy. We suck. Uh, it appears we do. Look, okay, I, I'm pooped. Let's call it a night. What? No, 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 we have to finish this. We've been slaving over it for two weeks and we're at the point where we can't write one joke. Let's just pick it up tomorrow. You know what, maybe we should take the scene another way. Not go for the laughs. George, George has lost his confidence in himself, right? That's mm -hmm. the point of our episode is, right? So what if he shared this, this true feeling? True feeling? Alan, this is the Jeffersons. Last week, George confessed his love for possum stew. Well, we somehow have to power through this. Okay, we'll be fresh tomorrow. The days are passing. Don't you think I know that? 
It's now been 10 months, one week and two days. I had a dream last night that I was in a threesome with Ronald McDonald and Nixon. Sarah, you've got to end this. I know, <laughs> Nixon. Yes, seriously. Go into any frat house and grab the first boy who doesn't throw up on you. No, we've been through this. It has to be someone I know, someone who gets me and has my best interests at heart. You'd think in 10 months, one week, and two days in a city the size of Los Angeles, at least four of them would fall out of palm trees. And this is nuts. I'm going insane. I let Ronald McDonald go down on me with his rubber nose. Okay. Okay. Okay, Sarah, get up. Come with me. Come here. Where are we going? He leads her to the couch. I've been thinking about this for a while now. Uh -huh. and it's, it's a little out there, but I think it might solve many problems. You need to have sex with someone who cares about you. And I need you to once again be the Sarah who could come up with 10 jokes in 11 seconds. So what are you saying? I'm saying I volunteer. What? I'm saying you and I should consummate. There won't be any of the usual complications that invariably follow in heterosexual relationships. It will be purely physical <laughs> no, and loving. You can let out all that anxiety and frustration. We share a smoke, bask in our post-coital glow, then dive right back into the second act. You're serious? Yes, I am. Alan, that's very sweet, but really? Yes, this is something you need. It's, it's eating away at you. I mean, your growling is scaring the neighbors. Look, I, I see what you're saying, that to just sleep with anybody would only make you feel worse. So why not turn to your best friend? What could be better for an uncomplicated relationship than someone who's not attracted to you? Look, Alan, sleeping with me is a lovely gesture. Most good friends are not that considerate. But you and I go way back and can you even? What, oh, you, you mean, can I perform? Of course, I've been with women before. You have? When? Yeah. High school drama club. 20 hot girls, three guys. Even the gay guys got lucky. <laughs> Meanwhile, 500 horn dogs all go after the same cheerleader. Jeez, straight males are such idiots. Well, so how did it go with a girl? Well, I did so well that on my acting resume, I listed it under special skills. <laughs> I do love you, but this is loony. <laughs> One week, two days. You know, you're not the first person to suggest we sleep together. Oh, God, my mother. She offered to pay off my student loans. Just being on the appalling. I mean, on the other hand, she does have a birthday coming up. Okay. I mean, no, no, I'm not saying yes, but let's, let's maybe fool around a little. I don't know, see where it goes, okay? Oh my God, I can't believe I'm saying this. Ooh, heavy petting, yes! <laughs> yes. Okay, since it's been a while since you were with a woman, what, what can I do to help get you sexually stimulated? Read lines from arsenic and old lace. <laughs> I tell you what, let's start with a kiss. Oh, you've done this before. Shut up. They lean in and share a long kiss. Mmm, nice. You too. Who are you imagining? What do you, who, what, what do you mean? During the kiss, who are you imagining? It couldn't, it couldn't be you? Not with that smooch. Yum. <laughs> yeah, okay, fine. Who are you imagining? Paul Newman. Oh my God, me too. <laughs> the kiss again. Mm. Mm. Now it's you. And for me, it was Clint Eastwood. <laughs> One more kiss. Mm. You. Yeah. They begin to make out, but they're both self-conscious, not sure where to put their hands, what to grow. Finally, Sarah pulls back. Wheezy, you spent $20 on a book. Why didn't you just see the movie? And Wheezy says, learning to quilt? Yes, I love it. They ah! both spring from the couch and return to the table. Sarah types in the line. Mm -hmm. And George says, Wheezy, for 10 cents, you can get a pamphlet called Learning to Sew. <laughs> Thank you for trying. Okay. That's what partners do. Not really, but thanks. <laughs> Doug answers, followed by Bob. You can't run him over with your car. He's your boss. Besides, this is LA. Who walks? I don't care. He's banging Linda. 
He's your program director. The man hired you. You gave you the break of your life. Oh, oh I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm just supposed to take it? He steals my girl, the only one I have ever loved, and I'm just supposed to lay down, let it happen? Yes. Well, I can't do that. I'm a Buzz Baron. What kind of name is Buzz Baron? Who's he trying to impress? Roger Ramjet? She's not your girl. I'm way less mercurial than I was a month ago. This is crazy. Roger Ramjet would be a great gay porno name. What about all that shit that she didn't want to get involved with anyone she worked with? What, did he promise her a promotion? Service me for six months and you can drive the prize van. Oh, that elusive glass ceiling. So bang someone else. I do. Practically every night. If I don't get it at least four or five times a week, I can't function. Ugh, a week? Did he just say a week? Very heal, but it's not her. And I, I keep seeing this image in my mind. The two of them, they're together and they're naked. They're, they're undulating. They're, they're thrusting. Her legs are wrapped around them and they're breathing heavy. They're almost gasping. Sweat pouring off of both of them, practically melding into one. A beat, and then Sarah snaps. She grabs the cable box with both hands and crashes it over Doug's head if the cord wasn't attached and Alan didn't grab it. Well, easy. What the hell? One clunk, one good clunk. Box. Not until he's dead. This isn't the way. What did I do? Are the boxes rented? You couldn't have gotten a longer cord. Let me have it. Come closer, you coward. What did I do? Undulating, sweating legs every which way. Oh, 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 okay. I get it now. I'm gonna lose my deposit. Sarah finally releases the box. Alan returns it to the top of the table. Thank you. Listen, Sarah, I'm sorry. I forgot about your noble experiment. I usually don't mind being an asshole, but only to people I think are bigger assholes, which is pretty much everybody. But when there's someone I respect, like you and Bobby and Alan getting there. I, I, I feel bad if I, if I cross the line. So, mea culpa. Well, okay. thanks. It's nice to see there's a human side to you. Thank you. Buried way down deep inside there, hidden in a teeny tiny crevice. Got it. Undetectable by microscopic equipment. So fine Stop. that even okay. the blushing. Sarah, I'm getting a drink and you're coming with me. I don't care if we have to go to a bar where there are women. I'm there. Wait, I have something for you. I know this won't totally make up for my insensitivity, but it is from the heart. He ducks into his bedroom. This is unbelievable. He never gives gifts. Doug re-enters with a K's J t-shirt. There. It's a real collector's item. Gee, a KHJ t-shirt. The only way to get one is to lose one of our contests. Oh, wow. Thank you. My grandmother used to have a name for a treasure like this. What was it? Shmata. I also have jewelry. But that's for Linda. No, 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 no. This is fine. Anything more than a stolen giveaway item would be inappropriate. Alan crosses to the front door. Easy, get your own self over here. We got to go. Yes, George, you're such a nudge. Thanks again. Alan and Sarah exit. Before the door shuts completely, we hear. Made in Bhutan. <laughs> Not even China. The phone rings. They ignore it. Does Buzz know how you feel about this? Because this could get you fired. Of course not. What am I, an imbecile? He thinks the goat delivered to his apartment was just a shipping snafu. Every day for a week. A beep, then. Doug, it's Linda. Yeah, I know that it's you calling and hanging up. Please stop doing that. I don't get it. You're so talented and funny. But just be nice and we can be friends, okay? Well... Have a nice day and stop it. Oh man, that is not cool. Not cool at all. Sometimes I, I just want to hear her voice. And now I have this 
What is wrong with you? I I've got a real Jones for Sarah, probably more than you and Linda. We're talking love with a capital L, my friend. I I'd marry her even if she wanted to raise our kids reform. But you don't see me doing psycho shit. No, no. You you're right, Bobby. This woman should not have this much control over me. Absolutely. Let me hear it one more time. No. Doug reaches for the machine. Bobby blocks him and Doug backs off. At least you get calls. Another day goes by without hearing from The Tonight Show. Are you still doing the same material? Well, yeah. But, but I'm always tweaking it, you know? Still trying to nail down my Jewish persona. Woody Allen is the cerebral Jew. Richard Lewis is the neurotic Jew. Robert Klein is the frustrated Jew. Mel Brooks is the crazy Jew. Jackie Mason is the Jew Jew. I have been the Long Island Jew, the self-loathing Jew, the delicatessen Jew, and now I'm the observational Jew. Jesus, what's left? Just a happy-go-lucky Jew, but there's no such thing. Okay, let me hear some of your routine. Right now? Yeah, pretend I'm a Tonight Show producer. Fred, find me some new blood, a, a Jew who can observe things. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, okay, all right, got it. Have you ever been to one of those same day cleaners? I think their idea of a day is the same as God created the world in seven days. So yeah, it's a day, but give or take three billion years. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And, and, and have you noticed that on every shirt you get back, there's a note saying they found a stain they couldn't get out? On, on TV, you watch those Tide commercials. They're taking out blood, tar, axle grease, wine stains from the third century. But at the same day, clean as a smudge of dust, they're stymied. Throw the shirt away. I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. Okay, okay. I, I, think, I think I get the, the, the gist of the hilarity. And? That's fine. Um, but can I make a suggestion? Um, Another completely different way to go. Move to Michigan and teach middle school? No. Go to the market and buy packs of gum. What? Yeah. Then get up on the stage and say, hey, who would like a stick of gum? Lots of people are going to raise their hands. So you take your mic, you go into the audience, you hand out the gum and chat with the folks. Are you having a brain aneurysm? Look, Bobby, you are naturally funny. You say hilarious, goofy things when you're not trying. So just be yourself. Ask people where they're from. Schmooze. I'll bet you'll get more laughs. And if you're looking to do something no one else is doing, I guarantee you that is it. So, so you're saying I should just go up there and, and wing it? Yes. Bobby, you're better than your material. And all these personas you're trying on, none of them are you. You win an audience by being authentic, keeping it real. Doug, with all due respect, you have no idea what it's like standing on the stage. I talk to 50,000 people every afternoon. Yeah, but it's not the same. You don't see them. You can't tell if they're not laughing. Not me. When I'm on stage, they're right there in my face. You either make them laugh or they hate you. Oh, that glare. Oh, man, that glare. Like you accidentally blew up their motorhome. And then their silence is so deafening you can hear a kitten pissing on cotton. 50,000 pairs of ears, much easier to please than 20 pairs of eyes. So why do you do it? Because it's my way of serving God. My people believe that humor is the balancing pole of the tightrope of life and... Jews have always used humor to remain upright. If I can make people happy, lessen their burdens, then this gift of laughter will be used for good. Just hope I'm not 50 working cruise ships and making balloon animals during the day. Okay. Well, good luck then. I'd like to see you try it. Will it impress the mademoiselle? Linda, again, Jesus. You know, normally I wish I were you, but right now, this minute, I don't. So thank you, man, because uh, it's like the weight of the world has been lifted off my shoulders. What a great feeling. You're right not to envy me. The one thing in the entire world I want, I can't have. Yeah, ain't it a shame? Doug crosses to his bedroom as he exits.
Jeez, I mean, you'd think getting a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame would be something to her. Right. Wait, what? Fuck! We fade out as we end Act 1. Act 2. We hear a few seconds of the Jefferson's theme, then scene 6 apartment next evening. Alan and Sarah are writing. Okay. Okay. You're going to fight me on this, but I believe strongly in this. We're at the end. I think George should take a minute to tell Wheezy that for all his bluster, he knows that it's her support that accounts for his confidence and success. Okay. Wait, what? Yeah, do it. Just, just like that? Yeah. There, there won't be any jokes. I know. Sarah, are you all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. For sure. Yes. You didn't go down on Ronald McDonald in your dream, did you? No. Well, not last night. Let's just write this. Bobby answers from the front door. Hey, Nick. Any messages for me? Uh, I haven't checked the machine. Bobby crosses to it and hits the button. Beep! Then, Alan Stein of Larrabee Street in West Hollywood this is Mark Elliott from KHJ Radio. If you had answered your phone, KHJ plays all the hits. You would have won $1,000. So sorry and keep it on KHJ. Holy crap. I don't even own an AM radio. FM is the future. Another beat then. Yeah, this is Earl Zellman, booking coordinator for The Tonight Show. Oh my God, finally. I'm trying to reach Doug. I can't even begin to pronounce his last name about a guest spot on The Tonight Show. Your stand-up routine was hilarious. Please call me at 818-555-4310. Thank you. I'm going to kill myself. Wait a minute. I don't, I don't understand. What stand-up routine? He signed up for an open mic. I've been doing stand-up for a year. He's been a comic for six minutes. He gets the Tonight Show. Honestly, I'm going to kill myself. Look, look, it is shitty, especially losing it to him. But you could always get the Tonight Show next week or, or next month. It's not like the Tonight Show is now closed. Or you're a woman. Phone rings. Why did Doug even do an open mic night? He had six prepared minutes? No, he had no prepared minutes. He handed out gum. That was his whole routine. Giving people gum and riffing with them. That's bizarre. No, what's really bizarre is that he signed up for open mic night because I told him to. Oh, man. I mean it. Does anybody have a gun? Yeah, sure. I'll juice pack key. Beep! This is Tommy W. Morgan at KDES Palm Springs, looking for Bobby Drucker. Got your tape for the weekend gig, and unfortunately, I'm going to have to pass. You sound good, but it's not our sound, not the Palm Springs sound. But you keep on keeping on. Later. Fuck you! I'm not good enough for Palm fucking Springs? It's a thousand degrees and everyone is over a hundred. The Palm Springs sound? What is that? An ambulance? You tried to get a radio gig? Yes. And I can't even get that. But you don't want that. I know, which only makes it worse. If I write a note, you'll give it to my folks, right? Okay, look, you're starting to talk crazy. No one can even hear in Palm Springs. Calm down, guys. Smoke a doobie, chug a beer. Do you have Valium in your purse? No. Nardo? No. What kind of Jew are you? I have my doll. Well, that's not actually, you know what? Hold, hold on to that. Yeah, okay. Oh, Lord, our God, King of the Universe, why are you torturing me? What have I done to deserve this? I'm not asking for miracles. Just five minutes between the mighty Carson art players and Neil Sadaka. Your time will come, I promise. Yeah, you've been saying that, and yet someone else will be playing the hits for hospice care. Can anyone in this fucking town, other than America's guest, Doug Manugalarian, catch a break? Yes. Me. You? I've been waiting for the right time to tell you, which apparently is never, so I'll just do it now. I was offered a job on NBC Saturday night. Huh? I, I haven't taken it yet, but they called me this morning. Ah. 
Wow. How did, uh, how did this happen? Well, you remember my friend who works there? Well, without me knowing it, she slipped them old material from my stand-up act and they liked it. And you didn't bother to mention any of this to me, your partner? Or me, the schmuck who lives with him? It just happened today. Alan, I didn't plan this. Oh, so do you want to take it? I, I don't know. Bullshit. You've wanted to work for that show since day one. Be since before day one. Go. I, I didn't commit. So what? You moved back to New York? Yeah, yeah. When they say live from New York, it's Saturday night. Yes, they're in New York, Bobby. Jesus Christ, that too? You could come with me. Great. I could lose both of you? There's only so much a man can take. They hired you, not me. Yeah, but, but we could go as a team. I, I'd gladly split the salary. I'm sure they'd be thrilled, two for one. No, Sarah, I don't, I don't want to move to New York. And I don't want to write satire. I mean, satire is great. It's just, it's not what I do. I'm, I'm a storyteller. I like exploring real people and relationships. And that's just a different animal, a different avenue. Thank you, Lord. How can you be so into the future and not see that this is the next big thing? Situation comedies are becoming an art form. The Mary Tyler Moore Show, All in the Family, MASH. Yeah, but we're writing a Jefferson. So what? It's an in. No one starts at the top. The creators of the Mary Tyler Moore Show wrote My Mother the Car. I like that show. But Alan, our two years are up. Who knows if we'll even get a Jefferson's? This might be our one chance. Go so take it. Go. Go. Dress warm. Stay away from Mr. Goodbar and Chevy Chase. I told them I'd have to think about it, discuss it with you. Well, you have, discussion's over. I'm, I'm sorry, I really am. I, we're more than partners. Hell, we almost slept together. What? That's a long story, it didn't happen. <laughs> Still, I'm on the brink here. But this could be exciting. It could also be Murray going to work for Sue Ann. Look. Jerry Markowitz is expecting the script. I'll write the nice George moment, then I'll turn it in. I, I can stay and do that with you. Nope, nope, that's not your thing. You need to save your talent for writing conehead jokes. Maybe I should go. Doug bursts in from the front door drunk. He's wearing a Sinatra hat, has a cigarette in one hand and a drink in the other. So drink up all you people. Order anything you see. Now. Have fun, you happy people. The laughs and the jokes are on me. Shut up. Pardon me, but I got to run. Yeah, me too. The exit's holding That's back tears. Uncommonly clear. Got to find who's now the number one and why my angel eyes ain't here. Excuse me while I disappear. Oh, please disappear. I know who the number one is and just what he is up to. There's a call on the machine. They want you to go on the Tonight Show. Yeah, yeah, whatever. He is not fooling me, that son of a bitch. Didn't you hear me? The Tonight Show wants you. Yeah, I heard you. He is at her place every night. Jesus fucking Christ. Usually those three, four o'clock in the morning. Wait a minute, wait, how did you know that? The what? what? What time he leaves? Doug, are you following them? You just see, see they, they think they think they're being cute. They leave the station separately. She goes straight home. He arrives a half hour later with takeout, usually from Twin Dragons. Living room stays lit till around 11. I assume they're watching TV, but the blinds are shut. Then they go off to the bedroom. That window's blocked by a neighbor's terrace. And then, then they, just, they just do it for four hours. Okay, man, you have crossed a line. That is weird ass shit. I don't do anything. 
I just sit in my car and I watch. This is stalking. No, it's parking. No, it's a crime. You could go to jail, you pervert. I have to know what I'm up against. What are you, what you're up against? I'll tell you what you're up against, failure. Despite being in the coveted Pepsi generation, we don't always get our objects of desire. We don't always get our dream jobs. We get rejected. We don't, we don't measure up. People leave us. We experience failure. So, so what do we do when that happens? We suck it up. We deal with it. We move on. Sometimes we even settle for something less. What we don't do is hurt other people. We don't invade their privacy. We don't, we don't prevent their happiness just because we're not getting our own. We fucking grow up. Or we don't settle. We don't whine. We don't accept failure. We don't stop until we get what we want. Those dream jobs and objects of desires you miss out on, we got them. Why? Because we take them. We do what we have to do. We take risks. We break rules. We think big. We win. You're Pepsi. We're Coke. Yeah, well, us poor losers still have one thing over you. At least we can deal with disappointment. You won't know how to handle it. I won't have to. I am the greatest. Uh, well, if Joe Frazier can beat Muhammad Ali, then Buzz Barron can certainly beat you. Go fuck yourself. Oh, oh really? That's your clever bone mom? Your, your rejoinder for the ages? Go fuck yourself. Doug exits the apartment, slamming the door. He scares me. I'll say. So do you. What, me? Yeah. All that doom and gloom. You're the optimistic guy. You're the cheerleader. Cheerleaders wind up alcoholics living in trailers wearing moo-moos. Oh, man. I rely on you to tell me everything's all right, even when we both know it's bullshit. Work with me here. Sarah's the talent here. What? No, you both are. No, not like her. And of course, Saturday night jumped at her stand-up material. There's this... There's this ridiculous notion that women can't write hard jokes. Like you need testosterone to put words in Gilligan's mouth. Well, Sarah is as good or better than any writer of any hormone. Question is, how did it take so long for someone to finally recognize that? No, the real question is, you almost slept with her? That, that's what you're fixated on? Nothing ever happened? Why do you care? I'm just curious. And your mom said she'd buy me a car if I somehow made it happen. I don't know if I could write without Sarah. Oh, that's bogus. Of course you can. No, I never have, and I'm, I'm terrified. Tell you what, you feel you need a partner? Okay, I'll write with you. What? Stand up and radio hasn't worked. Maybe this is God's plan for me. I know I'm not Sarah, but I'm funny and just as sexually frustrated. More. Hers is by choice. Bobby, that's... It's a wonderful offer, but you will make it as a stand-up. Writing with me would only hold you back. That's okay. I, I want to do it. Oh, yeah. Now you say that now. You don't want to write with me, do you? Bobby, you've, you've never done it before. And there's a real learning curve. Sarah and I started at the same level, and we grew together. You would need time to get up to speed, and I don't, I don't have time anymore. Jesus, now I'm rejected by my own family. Bobby Bob heads for the bedroom. No, Bobby, it's just the circumstances. Yeah, that... yeah, yeah, fine. But answer me one thing. Be honest. Be totally honest. Okay. What if Doug had made the same offer? I am so fucked. Bobby exits into the bedroom, slamming the door. Alan sits sadly alone, collecting his thoughts. He finally crosses to the table and sits down at the typewriter to complete the scene. He takes a moment, thinks of a line. Wheezy, it's tough trying to make it in a world where everyone thinks you don't belong. But I've always had you steering me right, setting an example. So thank you. You're the man I always hoped I'd be. He's about to peck away when. Ah, uh, shit, I don't know how to type. Lights dim. That's 
Afternoon Delight, which I want to send out to Buzz and Linda, two crazy kids who slipped out early today. Guess every night until four was not enough. But hell with that. It's time to place another feudal KHJ cash call, the contest that reminds listeners every hour that most people don't listen to KHJ. We hear a phone dialing and then ringing. Hello. Is Diana Emerson, West Covina? Yes. Hi, this is Doug Manugalarian from KHJ Radio. We're live on the air, Miss Emerson. If you'd answered your phone with the phrase that pays, you could have won $1,000. Oh, my. Ah, next time your phone rings, don't say hello. Say KHJ's program director and record librarian are fucking each other's brains out on company time. You could be our 93 KHJ. Apartment day. Sarah's alone in the apartment packing up some things. She's wearing the KHJ t-shirt and jeans as Doug enters. You're home early. Aren't you supposed to be on the air? I um got the day off. Oh. You're taking that New York job, aren't you? Yeah. Big mistake. What? You should stick it out here. Why? You need Alan. What are you talking about? He's the yin to your yang, or vice versa. What does that have to do with anything? Sarah, you're very funny, and I'm sure you do real well writing all those sketches with all those other young writers who are also funny, but, you know, there, and then there will be your name on that crawl with all the other names. Blink, and you might miss it. So what's wrong with that? Selling yourself short. With Alan, you could stand out. Like I said, you're funny, but Alan brings something else, a real humanity. Alan's always looking to make your scripts Deeper, more emotional. You've read our scripts? Yes. And I've heard you two work from the other room. You both do shitty George Jefferson impressions, by the way. <laughs> the best shows are the ones where people care. See, Alan, Alan has a gift for that. I, I don't. And you, you have an amazing wit. The scripts you guys turn out are Damn good. If someone would just read one, they'd know, and they will eventually. And hopefully you won't be 90. Ain't that the truth. Then your voices will really be heard. Not just a line or two in a group written land of the Gork Muppet sketch. Mm -hmm. Your two names will fill the screen. And eventually you will create your own shows, your visions. Don't tell me you guys haven't been dreaming about that. We have. We even imagine our Emmy acceptance speech. I hope you mention me. Actually, we do. Well, thanks. It's nice to be loved. Mm -hmm. But isn't that more exciting? And before you can answer, I know you are still on the fence. How do you know that? You didn't hop on the first jet to New York the minute the job was offered. Something's holding you back. I see. Well, Mr. Expert on the human psyche, could you please bring your powers to bear and enlighten me as to just what that is that is holding me back? A hat. What? A hat. To throw in the air to tell the world you've made it after all. <laughs> the Mary Tyler Moore hat. Exacto Mundo, which you have not yet thrown. Mm -hmm. Because in your heart, there's something missing. Mm -hmm. Maybe Saturday night isn't making it after all. Not really, not, not, not for you. Okay. There is a part of me that wants to stay and and Alan and I do have four dynamite pilot ideas ready to go, but to give up Saturday night for just a chance at getting a Jefferson's? A Jefferson's? I mean, if it were all in the family. Uh, uh, wrong answer, sorry, thanks for playing. Sure, that'd be easier, but that isn't. this isn't supposed to be easy. This is a major life decision. 
your whole future. You have to decide what you really want. Is it chasing the hot new thing or growing as an artist? And yes, I know I loaded that question. I hear what you're saying, but it's just so, so risky. So what? Yes, risky. No guarantee is total crapshoot, but fuck it. Shoot high, go for it. Roll them bones, bet on yourself. I believe in you. Hmm. Really? Thank you. You should believe in you too. She smiles and out of appreciation hugs him. He hugs her. She looks up. Their eyes meet. He leans in and kisses her. She's very receptive. When it's over, she starts unbuttoning his shirt. Oh, hell, let's just do this. As the lights dim. Hi, this is Mark Elliott. Starting tomorrow, join me every afternoon from 3 to 6 right here on 93 KHJ. Scene 8. Apartment, one hour later. Doug's shirt and Sarah's KHJ shirt are draped over the couch. From the bedroom, there's lovemaking. Bobby enters the apartment. Doug? Doug, are you here? Unbelievable. He bangs hard on the door. God damn it, Doug. Get the fuck out here. Now. Leave me alone. I said now, god damn it. Okay, okay. Bobby wanders back into the living room. What are you even doing here? You should be at KHJ on your hands and knees begging for your job back. Instead, you're banging some... He picks up the KHJ t-shirt and it suddenly dawns on him who Doug is having sex with. Dog enters, having thrown on a shirt and pants. What? Bobby slugs him. How could you? Ow! Bobby continues to swing at Doug. He now begins defending himself, but Bobby is out of control of the Tasmanian devil. Sarah, you had to fuck Sarah? Of all the people, you had to fuck Sarah? Hey! You knew how I felt about her, you knew! Sarah runs in, hysterical, wearing a long t-shirt and her jeans. She tries to get hey, in between them. Hey, break it up. Break it up. You piss on everything you see, even me. Bobby, stop. It jolts Bobby. He backs off. Doug staggers back, shaking. And you, that's who you held out for? All those months for him? Couldn't be me. Oh, no. I care about you, but that's not good enough. I'm a comedian. So who do you end up fucking at the... 10 months or 10 years or whatever it was? Another comedian! I'm so sorry. You must think I'm the biggest fucking idiot on the planet, which I am. I don't think that. Shut up, shut up. And you, get the fuck out of here, now. Aye, aye, Captain. Doug crosses the front door where Alan enters to hear. I'm glad KHJ fired you, you ungrateful son of a bitch. No, screw you and screw them. I don't need KHJ. That's radio. I've got The Tonight Show. Remember? Out! Bobby hurls the balled up shirt at the door as Doug exits. What is going on? Bobby, I... I, can... I don't want to hear it. That was the last straw. I give up. Bobby exits into his room, slamming the door. What the hell just happened? I did something really, really stupid. I, Doug was there for me and said some wonderful things at a time where I needed someone to say wonderful things. Besides you guys who also say wonderful things, but you're my friend, so of course you do, but he is not, and yet he did, and it's been 10 months, which is way longer than I thought it would be, so I- You slept with Doug? Yes! Are you daft? I told you it was stupid. Oh shit. Oh, sh you're the girl Bobby loved who didn't love him back. What? Bobby loved me? Once. He never told me. Did he say anything? Give you any indication? No, I don't know. Oh, wait, he did kiss me. That's a clue. Oh, I am so sorry. I'm very confused. I like him, but I don't date comedians, although I just did, except he's not really one, although he is going on The Tonight Show, so I guess, yeah, he is, but love? I don't know if I love Bobby. Do you see what I'm going through here? No, no, I don't. I'm not on acid. But <laughs> it would be nice if you could just patch things up with Bobby before you leave. Yeah, no, I will, I will. But about that, I'm not leaving. What? I've made up my mind. I'd rather stay and write with you. Bobby answers. Do you have any paper? 
Yeah, on the table. Thanks. He grabs several sheets of paper and a pen and marches back to his room. I don't understand. I thought you had settled this. I did, but then I came to my senses. Really? Are these the same senses that told you to sleep with Beelzebub? Okay, I wasn't thinking clearly then, but right before then I was. Take the job. What? It's what you really want. Take it, take the job, be happy. Alan, I don't want to. You? Don't worry about me. At some point I've got to learn to write on my own. This is as good a time as any. You're okay with writing on your own? Of course, why wouldn't I be? Look, Doug thinks we both bring real gifts to the table. Again with Doug, does he have to be in the center of every conversation? Jesus, isn't it enough he ruined Bobby's life? Oh shit, Bobby. What? what? The, the paper, that was the last straw. Would I contact his folks? He's writing a suicide note. Oh God. Bobby? Oh. They run into his bedroom. They re-enter recoiling. Jesus! Oh, Lord. Several beats later, Bobby enters, zipping up his pants. Christ, can't the guy even whack off in private? You don't knock? Bobby, we are we are so sorry. Well, so, 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 so what sorry. What's wrong with you people? We, we weren't thinking. If it's any consolation, you're bigger than Richard Lewis. Why did you guys do that? <laughs> Kill yourself. What? Did you not say you were giving up, that, that you were going to shoot yourself? Yeah, but it's not and like you I wanted was... paper to write a suicide note. That's what you thought. You've been pretty distraught lately. Tonight Show, Richard Lewis, Palm Springs, David Letterman, Alan not working with you. I don't have to list them for God's sake. Oh, right. Sorry. Yes, I have decided to give up. We were right, Bobby. Bobby, there are hotlines you could call. Wait, so you were going to masturbate yourself to death? No, I'm. I'm not going to kill myself. Giving up stand-up. What? That was going to be a note to my parents saying what I was going to do next. Which is what? I'm going to enroll in rabbinical school. Rabbinical school? <laughs> really? You want to become a rabbi? There are other ways to bring joy to people besides liquoring them up and bludgeoning them with jokes. This has always been my fallback position. The rabbi. Hey, it's not such a stretch. I'm just going from observational to observant. Well, all right, that's great. It's a bit of a shock, but I think you may be onto something here. And you sure won't have to compete with Doug over this profession. That's true. He may be brilliant, but I'm circumcised. <laughs> uh, listen, again, I, uh, I'm so sorry about earlier. I was completely out of my friggin' mind. Can you forgive me? The phone rings. Alan gestures to just let the machine pick it up. I don't know. I'm really pissed. But over the next year of studies, I'm sure they'll be shoving compassion and forgiveness up my ass. So, yes, eventually. Okay. But I no longer want to sleep with you, ever. Right. Well, at least you didn't say that after sex. <laughs> Beep. Hey, Alan, Jerry Markowitz from the Jeffersons. Like I told you this morning, we liked your sa sample and are going to give you guys an assignment. Could you and Sarah come in for a story conference Tuesday at two? Get back and again, congratulations. Wow, guys, that's incredible. You did it. Simmentobu, muzzle tobu, muzzle tobu, simmentobu. Stop, wait, wait a minute. You knew about this? Yes. So when I said I wanted to stay and you said no, you knew about this? I didn't want you to change your plans and dreams because of me. But the deal is both of us. You probably will back out if we break up. My mother will just have to play golf with someone else. You idiot. You're welcome. Alan, I'm staying. Sarah. You have no say in this. I'm your damn partner and that's the end of it. I don't need you, God damn it. Well, I need you. What? <laughs> you heard me. Look. Look, our lucky break wasn't your mom playing golf. It was us finding each other. I'm a comedy writer, but you're a writer, writer. And luck doesn't mean shit if you don't take advantage of it. I'm going to go farther in this business if I'm with you. And you're not going to be dragged down by me. So let's just do this. You serve pancakes at two pars for Christ's sakes. Why do you even need convincing? 
You're honestly not just doing this for me. No, you asshole. I told you I wanted to stay before I knew about this. Although now, hell yeah, we got an assignment. <laughs> Give me tova, muzzle tova, muzzle tova. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. We get it. <laughs> Alan hugs Sarah as the phone rings and they ignore it. Thank you. No, no, thank you. I bet it was the nice George moment that sealed the deal. It, it was actually. Ah, yay! I don't have to move back to New York. <laughs> Do you think they get the Jeffersons in Israel? This is Earl Zellman from the Tonight Show for Doug Manuka. Whatever, Doug, your appearance has been canceled. Your little radio stunt has come to our attention. You're not the type of performer that Tonight Show or NBC can endorse. Very sorry. Oh Lord, our God, King of the Universe, you do exist. That makes being a rabbi so much easier. Bobby crosses to his room. I'm gonna go tell my folks, but stay out. He exits. Okay. Now we just have to write the world's greatest script and not blow our one chance of a lifetime. Even though we're not black and have never done an assignment before. Yep. This is definitely why two Jews should never be left alone in a room together. Lights dim, as we hear. KYNO Fresno, welcoming in 1977 with Cash Call. Say the phrase that pays and win $50. 3 a.m., and this is Doug Mitchell. We hear the Mary Tyler Moore Show closing theme. Under, we hear a beat, then. Alan. It's your mother. Well, we just saw it. What a thrill to see your name on the Mary Tyler Moore Show. Listen, now that you've made the big time, you're splitting your salary with Sarah, right? Do you really need her? Hmm? Scene nine, apartment day, 1977. Ellen and Sarah writing at the table. Okay, okay, this argument is, is getting good. So mm -hmm. now Lou says, a woman director a woman news director of a TV station? Come on, you're never gonna get my job, Mary. And Mary says, I will too. And I'll take down this fake wood paneling. All that's missing is a moose head and spittoon. Ooh, nice. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. No, she says, I will too. And I will not let Ted on the air until he knows where Mexico is. I get a laugh. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. No, she says, yes, I will. And there won't be a bottle of scotch in the drawer. It'll be a playful Chardonnay. I like that. Let's go with that. <laughs> Wait, no. No, stop. What? No, no, no. There's still something missing. Wait, what if we went a different way? What different way? We give her a speech. Okay, get this down just in case. She says something like, y you know the real difference between men and women, Mr. Grant? Men are always told what they can do, and women are always told what they can't do. Well, I don't believe that. And neither did Junko Tabai, who, God love her, was the first woman to climb Mount Everest. I don't know why, but she did. And you ran a big three-part series on it, remember? So even you don't believe that. Someday I may get your job. And you know why? Because you'll recommend me. That's right. You know I could do it. I'll make some changes, certainly. But any new boss would do that. The point is, you and I both know it's only a matter of time. So thank you. I appreciate your support. All women do but me especially. Well? Where did that come from? I have no clue. Did you like it? Uh, are you kidding me? I'm not changing a word. Wait, really? It's the best Junko to buy speech there ever has ever been. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yours is very nice. Thanks. Here, here, copy it into the script. Sarah gets up from the table and begins rooting around her purse. Uh, wait, hold on, hold on. There's something I gotta, gotta do first. What? Something I have been waiting a long time for. Okay. This. She pulls a beret out of her purse, twirls, and does the Mary Tyler Moore hat <laughs> fling into the sky. Music as the final few notes of the Mary Tyler Moore <laughs> show opening theme as we black out the end. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Uh, I am Ken Levine, the playwright of Our Time, and I would like to introduce you to our amazing cast. First of all, thank you so much for watching, and uh, thanks to our tremendous cast. We have Laura Shine. Hello. Noah Weisberg. 
Oh. Uh, Jonah Platt, Eddie K. Thomas, and providing the stage direction and some voices, Kevin Pollack and Madeline Franklin. Hi. Also, thanks to Howard Hoffman for some graphics. And if you enjoyed this show, we please uh, invite you to give to the Actors Fund. It's a great organization. The details will be coming up here in just a second. Again, thanks so much. Uh, stay safe, get vaccinated, and um, thanks again. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.